Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. In this presentation we're going to look at Homedale 1.20 which is a WLAN or Wi-Fi monitor. Enjoy! So what is Homedale? Homedale, number one, you can go get it at the following URL which is run.2 to slash SZ or Z. What else? It's a portable application and it has a command line option which I love. Uh, no installation required. Just copy the, download the files and copy them onto a USB stick and, and off you go. To avoid any problems at the command line, if you use the command line option, just make sure you're in admin mode because uh, sometimes you're not and it tends to cause you all sorts of grief. And that's the way Homedale looks when you've got it running. So why use Homedale? Well, we can use them in batch files, shortcuts, or schedulers in the command mode or prompt. It's lightweight and portable, nothing to install. I use it whenever I want to measure the receiver's signal strength with their card, their drivers, etc, etc. Sometimes you go out with your wireless analyzer with its nice little card and its great drivers and external antenna and everything looks great, but I want to see the signal strength on the laptop or the desktop that I'm trying to troubleshoot at that time. It's not difficult to figure out. It's a very, very simple application. It's not bloated. There's no GPS settings and another extra nonsense. Uh, just a really simple, quick and dirty program. I also like the fact that it works with Windows 7 64-bit OS. Uh, one of the reasons I can't use NetStumbler anymore is because I've got Windows 7 64-bit OS. So all good reasons to use Homedale. All right, let's get cracking. We're going to start up Homedale. And to start Homedale, just simply run or double-click the Homedale executable. If you are at the command prompt, obviously you need to be in admin, admin mode. I've got a Windows Power Toilet I love to use. You simply right click on any of the folders and then select open at the command prompt and bang. I'm at the command prompt. I'm already in that directory. Works fantastic. There is no help screen or syntax display from the command prompt. So you can't do a dash help or dash question mark or anything like that. Uh, you're going to have to pay attention at the end of this to see what switches are available at the command prompt. So once you've started Homedale, you'll see the following screen and the tab you're going to want to start with is access points. And there is a list of all the access points or SSIDs if you will and you literally right click on the access point you want to monitor and select show graph. And that will take you to the next screen which is basically this next tab here, the access point signal, signal graph. Pardon me. So now that we've started gathering stats by right clicking on that access point and choosing show graph, we are now at that tab I mentioned earlier, the access point signal graph. And you're going to see this little line come across and obviously it depends on what you're watching. And it's pretty simple to understand if you're not familiar with these uh, RSSI or rate relative signal strength indicator values. Anything closer to negative 100 is uh, not a good signal, very weak. Anything closer to zero is a very strong signal. So you want to see things up near the top. What you don't want to see is a whole lot of spiky, 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 because that could indicate multipath or other issues. So this is a relatively uh, good signal here. And that one is not as good, but probably still usable. While you look at the graph, you may want to think to yourself, hmm, wish I could save this till later. Well, obviously you could do a screen capture or whatever, but I prefer to start logging. And by logging, then you'll have all the actual values. You can bring them into Excel. You can do your own graphs and all that good stuff. So how do you do that? You right click on any of the access, uh, either the access point or the access point signal strength screen. You're going to see a start logging option. There it is. And then as soon as you do that, it's going to start logging this in a text format with a space or tab separating the data. And there you go. You've, you've got it all right there. The logging will stop once I shut the application off. So there is no right click stop logging. There's just start or shut the app down. All right. Anybody who knows me knows I love the command line for obvious reasons. I've mentioned it earlier. I can script. I can put things in schedulers. I can do shortcuts, all that good stuff. Well, here's the following switches that I've been able to find out via uh, the guys at Homedale. Stefan specifically was a great guy to work with. He's provided me with all the information I need. Thank you very much, Stefan. And here we go. We've got the following switches. Slash S is log only for a specific SSID or access point. So that's kind of like your filter, if you will. Dash L is going to be your log name. 
dash, sorry, slash C is going to tell the command line to log this with a comma separating the data as opposed to the tab or spaces. So for example, homedale slash s ttf is going to now capture or log for that SSID. The log slash l is going to be called ttf.csv slash c says, hey, I want this thing comma separated. And then slash r is the interval in milliseconds. So 60,000 is 60 seconds. So when you're done, you uh, end up with a file that looks like that. Now that you have everything in that CSV log, it's pretty simple to just drag the thing into Excel and bang, you can do a graph fairly simply. There's uh, tons of graphing utilities out there you can use as well. But now I can do a graph my way. If I want to overlay other graphs and, or other SSIDs, you know, go to town, make it look as pretty as you like and customize it as much as you like. Of course, I've always got a little slant or a twist on things. In this uh, case, I've always thought, hey, you know what would be really neat? What if the client ran this script on their laptop for me for a little bit of time? And then from there, I had a little batch file that literally took this file and uploaded the CSV file or the log file to my PC. So this is an example of an FTP script that you could use uh, called ttf.ftp, for example. And it's just open Tony which is the name of the server or an IP address, whatever login ID, password, bin and hash is optional. You don't have to do that. And then finally put. So it's going to take that log file from that computer and it's going to copy that up to my machine and then buy. That's pretty well it. So from the client's perspective, it's just FTP space. You're going to do an S uh, dash S colon for script and TTF dot FTP and that's it. So neat. Again, uh, thank you, Stevan, for helping me out. I hope I pronounced his name right. <laughs> it's just all been via email. Really helpful guy. Good bunch of guys at Homedale. Um, thanks for listening to the presentation. Hope it helped, and have a good day. Bye for now.